listen up, Tesla shareholders, the most important vote for shareholders in the history of Tesla as a publicly traded company, nearly a decade and a half is about to take place. Make sure your voice is heard from Tesla themselves, protecting your investment and Tesla's future. Thanks to Elon Musk's vision and leadership, Tesla has created tremendous value for you, the owners of the company, all while advancing its mission to accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. These statements so far are accurate. Of course, there are many vested interest rights now, whatever agenda they happen to have, trying to destroy Tesla, harm Elon Musk, harm the company, harm their mission, and harm Tesla shareholders, you and I. Do not let this happen. So keep an eye out on or around the 29th of April. You should be able to vote, and your vote will make a difference. We'll click through to the learn about the upcoming vote in just a moment, but first, some context and background. Elon's leadership and Tesla's future. At this year's annual general meeting of stockholders, we will be asking you to help support the continuation of Tesla's extraordinary growth by approving two important proposals recommended by the Tesla board with Elon and Kimball Musk abstaining, e.g. they ain't voting. One of them, proposal four, a CEO performance award 100% aligned with stockholder interests. In 2018, Tesla's board of directors asked stockholders to approve a CEO performance award that incentivized Elon to meet staggering financial and operational objectives over a 10 year period. And Tesla shareholders voted overwhelmingly in favor of this. I was among them. In just five years, Elon delivered by hitting every single jaw dropping key milestone in the plan to deliver a total shareholder return of nearly 1100%. Six years later, an extremely corrupt activist in judge's clothing, Kathleen McSeebom, the Delaware court, stepped in to side with a plaintiff who owned just nine Tesla shares when he sued and ordered the plan be cancelled. This despite overwhelming approval from holders of literally millions of Tesla shares. The audacity of this absolute shit stain, I just can't believe it. Unlike most CEOs, Elon was entitled to receive no salary, no cash bonuses and no equity that would vest simply by the passage of time. Instead, he was asked to deliver the type of exponential value creation most thought was impossible or get nothing. Elon was also required to hold any shares awarded through stock options for five years after the option was exercised, meaning that he was not incentivized to achieve remarkable results at the time to earn his compensation, but also continue to drive growth for five more years. As stockholders recognized by voting in favor in 2018, the ultra ambitious plan was simple. If stockholders and the company benefits, so does Elon. I mean, what better way to incentivize performance? It's in everyone's interest. We believe in stockholder democracy. This important decision should be made by the owners of the company, you. We're asking you to make your voices heard and reinstate what you already said you wanted. Now, I just, I can't believe this has to happen again. Kathleen McSeebaum is extremely corrupt. She's not a judge, she's an activist. It's fucking disgusting, heinous. I can't believe this happened and I can't believe this is having to happen as a result. The decision from Kathleen McSeebaum spat in the face of Tesla investors, telling us our opinions don't count, our votes don't matter, fuck her. The other proposal Tesla would strongly encourage shareholders to vote in favor of is bring Tesla home to Texas. We believe in the rights of our stockholders. We believe their votes matter. In Delaware, which is where the company was previously headquartered, on paper, we won't get too far into the legal shit, but this is why Kathleen McSeebaum was allowed to fuck Tesla investors and harm the company. In Delaware, your vote was not respected, and again, may not be in the future. The Texas legal regime is strong and fair, and more appropriate to our mission. Our global headquarters, largest manufacturing facility and future are in Texas. We have thousands of employees in Travis County in Texas. We respect Texas. Texas respects us. Texas corporate law is developed. We have received a tidal wave of communications from stockholders asking Tesla to move from Delaware. And now as promised, the more info. Elon's accomplishments since Tesla's board and Tesla stockholders approved the 2018 CEO Performance Award. Feel free to pause and let some of these sink in, really. Grew revenues from approximately 11.8 billion to 96.8 billion dollars, roughly a 10 times increase in revenues, turned around profitability from a $2.2 billion loss to $15 billion in profit, increased the value of the company from $53.7 billion to $791.3 billion, oversaw groundbreaking innovations in artificial intelligence and sustainable energy, 
designed and built the best selling vehicle in the world, reduced CO2 emissions by tens of millions of tons, grew the energy business more than five times from 1.1 billion to 6 billion, developed unique and advanced technology as demonstrated by FSD Supervised. In 2018, the board of directors asked stockholders to approve the 2018 CEO Performance Award that incentivized Elon to meet staggering financial and operational objectives over a 10 year period. The 2018 Performance Award, which was approved by approximately 73% of all votes cast by disinterested stockholders, e.g. not including Elon's opinion, Kimball's, etc., was 100% at risk. Elon was entitled to receive no salary, no cash bonuses, and no equity that would simply vest by the passage of time. Instead, he was asked to deliver results that most thought were impossible. Elon's only opportunity to receive any compensation for all of his work and leadership would be a 100% at-risk performance award consisting exclusively of stock options that would vest only if certain exceptionally ambitious milestones were met. The performance awards would vest in tranches if Tesla achieved both a market capitalization milestone and operational milestones. And to be clear, few other CEOs on the planet, if any, would sign up for a 100% at-risk, purely performance-based compensation package. At the time of this 2018 compensation package, Tesla's market cap was $59 billion. The first milestone was $100 billion, then $150, $200, all the way up to $650 billion. More than a 10 times increase in market cap. At the time, media pundits, investors, people laughed at the idea of this being achieved. This is ridiculous. Come on, what are they, are they high? What, bro, come on. Guess what? Tesla far exceeded this well within the 10 year time frame. But it wasn't just market cap milestones. Revenue and or adjusted EBITDA milestones also needed to be met. It should go without saying. But clearly, this compensation plan was fully aligned with stockholders' best interest. As Tesla themselves right. the 2018 CEO Performance Award was simple. If stockholders achieved average or somewhat above average returns, Elon would likely receive nothing. But if the company achieved exceptional results, which by the way it did, Elon could earn exceptional incentives. The value of his compensation was linked directly to the extraordinary stock price performance, which was driven by the incredible achievements of Tesla under Elon's leadership since the performance award was first approved. The performance award was also intended to further align Elon's incentives with longer term stockholder returns by requiring Elon to hold any shares acquired through exercise of the stock options for a further five years after the option was exercised, not just for a five year period after the option vested meaning that he was not only incentivized to achieve remarkable results to earn his incentive awards, but also incentivized to continue to improve those results to ultimately realize value for those awards. Skipping ahead a little. The target set for Elon was so ambitious, growing Tesla's market capitalization by 1,000% and creating $650 billion in value for stockholders, that skeptics called them, quote, laughably impossible. Get those goals and Elon would receive stock options commensurate with that achievement. Fail and he would get zero. Elon did not fail and his success is shared by stockholders who received the lion's share of the value generated. Yet on January 30th, 2024, a Delaware court stepped in, substituting its judgment for the judgment of both stockholders and Tesla's board of directors. The court sided with the plaintiff who, when sued, held just nine shares of Tesla common stock and ordered the cancellation of the 2018 CEO Performance Award, even though disinterested stockholders representing more than 70% of shares voted in its favour and approved its adoption five years earlier. Again, what the fuck? This fucking activist in judges' clothing spat in the face of investors, insulted our intelligence. How dare she think she has the authority to tell us our votes don't count, our desires don't count, doesn't matter. Unbelievable. This is why I'm encouraging you guys to make sure your vote is counted a few days from now so we can right this wrong. The court's decision, if implemented, means that Elon would not receive any compensation for more than five years of service to Tesla, effectively rendering him an unpaid employee despite his many accomplishments, which include driving us to dominate the electric vehicle market and sell the best-selling vehicle in any category, lead us to groundbreaking innovations in artificial intelligence and sustainable energy, and growing stockholder value almost 1,100%. We don't agree with what the Delaware court decided, so we're giving stockholders the chance to make their voices heard. We believe in stockholder democracy. This important decision should be made by the owners of the company. That's you. The 2018 CEO Performance Award did what it was designed to do. Tesla's stock total return to shareholders in 2018 when the package was approved until the end of 2023, 1,097%. And at the time, critics and supporters agreed. The goals were staggering. Some quotes here from Doomberg. Quote, breathtaking in both size and in terms of the performance required to earn it. Another quote, tied solely to financials, pure performance-based from the Washington Post. 
quote, aggressive market capitalization and financial goals in order to be paid. Another one, galaxy size ambitions for growth. And noting that Musk must hold on to his shares for five years, a rare stipulation that's viewed as particularly shareholder friendly. What's not particularly shareholder friendly is the fact that there are a few very loud, fairly deranged wankers currently doing their best to rob Musk of his fairly earned compensation and more importantly to harm Tesla the company which is not in the best interest of shareholders and absolutely not shareholder friendly. This is why it is so important folks to make sure you vote. It could be the difference that makes all the difference. There's a lot of support however there are some very loud voices doing their best to destroy Tesla, to fuck the company, to bring Elon down and to ultimately harm Tesla shareholders. If you own Tesla stock you own Tesla a portion of the company you must make your voice count. Now, before we head over to a quick segment on CNBS discussing this pay package and the implications, if you've owned Tesla for long enough, you'll know how to do your proxy vote or you'll have discovered that you're unable to. Here's a pro tip. I highly recommend that you guys confirm that you are actually able to cast your vote, e.g. proxy vote. There are some junk ass platforms that don't allow shareholders to cast their vote. And guess what? If you're not voting with your shares, someone else is voting on your behalf however they deem fit. So I highly recommend you guys confirm that your current broker or brokerages, depending on how many you use, will allow you to vote. And if not, it's worth moving to a platform that will allow you to make your voice heard. To vote again on Elon Musk's multi-billion dollar pay package uh, that they had already granted back in 2018, but a Delaware court had voided that package about three months ago. Join us right now to talk about this on the Squawk News line, former SEC Chairman Jake Clayton, also a CNBC contributor. Uh, the appeal is going to happen in parallel. They're going to continue that, but uh, it appears that such a, a vote, if in fact it was to vote in favor of it, Jay, uh, would make any type of appeal moot. What do, what do you make of this, this idea that they're basically going to attach the decision uh, to the proxy and say, hey, uh, we've just, you know, if the judge didn't think we disclosed everything before, we've disclosed everything now. Well, I think um, I think you've captured it uh, exactly right, Andrew. Um, here we go back out to shareholders and we say uh, you have the facts and now you have the benefit of all this hindsight. And if you vote in favor of the same package again, um, it to me and I'm, and I'm speaking just very, um, uh, you know, 30,000 foot level, it does um, obviate uh, the need for the appeal. Um, and, and look, a, appeal process, court process um, is fairly messy. And if uh, you go to direct to shareholders and they have all the information, um, that that seems to be a much more efficient way to deal with this. Um, if in fact shareholders um, want to continue with this pay package, and I, what well, I'll note is, um, you know, this is all part of uh, I would imagine retention of Mr. Musk going forward right. as well. And that's the big leverage point in this, which is to say, you know. I think a shareholder has to worry or would, would have to think about whether they should be worried that he's going to you know, focus his attention elsewhere. Having said that, as the judge said, he already owns a huge portion of, of Tesla. Is he incentivized to keep, to keep going, if you will? Now, Andrew's just trying to make conversation here, but let's think about this with our brains for a moment here by reframing the question. Let's just say that you've got a million plus dollars of net assets. You're a millionaire on paper, right? And you're applying for a job. Your boss says... Or your potential boss, your potential employer says, oh, so you're a millionaire, huh? Okay, cool. Well, since you've already got a million plus dollars of assets, I'm thinking your salary is zero because you've already got enough. So does that seem fair? You can work hard for free, but you won't be compensated for any of that future work because you're already doing okay, right? Now, this is an imperfect analogy, but I think it illustrates the point. Compensation should be tied to value created, value brought to the marketplace, to shareholders. I don't want to get too far into the weeds here, but... It, we're talking about events that have yet to happen. What's happened in the past doesn't fucking matter. Incentivizing performance relates to the future. You dangle the carrot today for future performance and future results. Well, shareholders made the judgment. Look, look whether shareholders um, knew or did not know of the conflicts um, and what the judge cited was um, lack of process and the like at the time, when shareholders voted on this in 2018, they certainly understood the economics. Yep. Um, it was widely reported. You widely reported. I think it was a, you know, a 25, 30 to one shot that this would pay off. The you know expected value at the What's time it? was was two billion dollars. Um, they the shareholders, the sophisticated shareholders, they knew what they were voting. But Jay, so that's the interesting part about this, which is to say, you're right. In 2018, 
everyone thought this was a completely shoot for the moon, um, you know, as, as I said at the time, a skin in the game program. But it, it, and that was thought, but the context was different. Everybody was thinking about it prospectively. And they thought, you know what, if magically this actually were to somehow come to be, God bless, you'd be very happy to pay it. However, as you know, there are lots of people that when they get in a position and they can now look back and say, do I need to, do I need to pay all $50 billion? Um, if I could cut that by $10 billion or $20 billion, would I? And, and I think that's going to be the question today. And, um, you know, they did say, Tesla, this is that there are four of the largest shareholders in the company that want this vote and want to vote in favor of it. But I'm curious how you think shareholders should think about this, even the ones that voted in favor of it the first time. Well, I, I do believe, and I, Andrew, I, I'm not an expert on the terms of this pay package. I do believe that there's a retention element yes. um, if the shares are awarded as, as, um, as planned in 2018. For five years. I mean, that was one of the reasons that I thought the, the program was actually so aligned with shareholders. He has not been granted any of the shares yet. And even if he were to get them today, he would still have to hold them for another five years. So he's with the shareholders for the, for the next five-year ride. So I, I think you're right to, to think about this in both ways. What, what was originally granted what are the, if you're a shareholder, what are the likelihood that it's going to be reversed on appeal and go back to the same way? And then what's the likelihood that you're going to have to replace it if it's not reversed on appeal with something similar? You know, a rational shareholder may say, hey, let's just vote for this and get on with it. From an SEC perspective, Jay, are there no issues to be looked into? I mean, can, can uh, a company put up for vote a pay package for, for work that was done in the past, which is kind of unusual? I mean, how do you think about it? if you were still at the SEC? How would you think about this? Well, look, the SEC um, is a disclosure-based organization, and, and and the real the real question here is is the disclosure uh, sufficient for people to make an informed voting decision? Um, yeah, you know, in this one, of course, the SEC is going to look at it and think about it. But uh, this may be the most uh, disclosed and examined uh, pay package in the history of pay packages. Uh- Final thought, Jay, which is there was obviously a, uh, a plaintiff's lawyer that brought this case, and we were, we were talking about the possibility that the plaintiff's lawyer could actually become part of a proxy campaign against the approval of this. I would not be surprised, once again, why it is extremely important that everyone watching ensure their vote is cast. The lawyers, by the way, if you forgot, were requesting in excess of $5 billion dollars in fees for fucking Tesla investors from none other than Tesla. Utterly absurd and surely somewhat hypocritical given the entire case was around the absurdity of this compensation package. Meanwhile, they're wanting a record fee of in excess of $5 billion that amounts to many hundreds of thousands of dollars per hour that their team spent on this ridiculous case. What would happen to the appeal if, if, if this in fact were to uh, be voted and approved Do you think that Tesla says they're going to continue with the appeal? Part of that would be because they'd have to probably pay the legal fees for the plaintiff's lawyer. Right. Uh, Look, let's let's separate. Let's separate that from, um, you know, the shareholder voting process. It's 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 America. Um, Wonderful thing about America is we're going to hear all sorts of opinions on whether people should vote yes or no. um, uh, with the disclosure in terms of how the court plays out and whether the plaintiffs um, at the end of the day added value um, for the, the right. Tesla shareholders that that will be that will be that question did, did this process add value and, and should they be compensated for it we got to run is it uh, maybe we're playing it down uh, I don't know the Texas piece of this they're going to move to Texas that had been sort of telegraphed do you think that other companies are going to follow suit um, Andrew, corporate governance uh, has been evolving um, for 50 years between the states and between the federal government um, and the like. And, and there, has, there has been competition um, uh, for shareholders and corporations as to where they're going to incorporate. Um, I, do, I do think that Texas, Nevada, um, others are challenging Delaware. Um, and, and look, our federal system, it's, it's appropriate to have, uh, have competition. Not, and I don't think... I don't think this is necessarily a race to the bottom. Serious business, folks. Make sure your vote is counted. Make sure you can vote. Make sure you do vote. There are some very large sausage wallets, butthurt babies that, for whatever reason, don't think that Musk deserves his well-earned compensation and will be voting no. Some of these big babies own a lot of shares. Don't let them fuck you without consent. There's a word for that, right? Want more content? Early access? 
bunch of perks, click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. Ate like trash. Rarely exercised. Used alcohol as a stress crutch. Cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass. Got me back to the gym. Motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family. And of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy, wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work... Get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, or click the link at the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. And now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the link at the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.